look at John 3, verse 1. There is an interesting story we're all familiar with, but I want to I wanna pounce on some things and make sure I exhaust it, whether I get amen or not. Look at what the Bible says. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. This man was a ruler of the Jews. Uh -huh. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. <coughs> Jesus answered him, said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Interesting. Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Jesus said, do not marvel. All of us in this room. Don't marvel at what he says. He said, you must, as an imperative, must. you must be born again. I want to talk about an encounter with Jesus at night. All right. An encounter with Jesus at night. At night. Okay. Any man, woman, boy, girl who's had an encounter with Jesus must admit that when you met Jesus, he actually changed your life. Yes. Is that is that true? Is that a true statement? That Amen. every person who has had an encounter with Jesus, you can remember the day, you can remember the circumstance, and you remember vividly that when you met Jesus, when Jesus came into your life, he actually changed your life. Can I say this to every believer in this room? You cannot meet Jesus and not be changed. You cannot have a personal experience with Jesus and something not happen. I played church for a long time. I knew about Jesus, but I didn't know Jesus. I went through a phase like many of us are going through now. I was in church, but I was also deeply in the world. I played the field. I was out there doing what I wanted to do because there was no life-changing circumstance in my life. And can I say to you that the closer you walk with Jesus, your life will be altered day by day, moment by moment, because when you walk with God, He has a way of altering our lives. Do I have a witness in the room? And it don't matter where you are in life, it doesn't matter how tough your exterior is, uh, your interior is, the Lord has a way of piercing the most toughest heart. And the Lord has a way of specializing in finding and changing people who we consider out of reach. I wish I had a witness there because many people will write you off based on what they think they know about you. Any, any, any lasting relationship with Jesus is based on this word being born again. And any hope to make it to heaven must be based on our rebirth. And when you look at it, brothers and sisters, it's not talked about in the church because we are majoring in everything, but you rarely hear a preacher or people challenge people and ask them, oh, have you been born again? Uh. A lot of times you ask people about church life and what it means to be born again. A lot of people say that I have religious affiliation. My daddy was a deacon. My mother was a missionary. My father was the was a, was my grandfather was the pastor of the old church. And a lot of people feel that association with a religious figure makes them saved. But I need somebody to help us to understand that you don't just because you associate with religious people, it don't mean that you're saved yourself. 
Have you, can you honestly say that I know Jesus in a very personal way? And because I know him, he has altered my life. I don't think the way I used to think. I don't do the things that I used to do. I have a life-changing relationship that's not on Sunday morning. My relationship with God is Monday through Sunday. Somebody shout in this room. My relationship... with him. I need to talk to him every morning. I, I need to talk to him. And the thing that you have that other people don't have is that you can call on him yeah. at any time. Yeah. He had been observing Jesus. Yeah. 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 Because when you walk around him and long enough yeah. you can't just you can't stay help. away from him. You get what I call the can't help it. Yeah. Just like I'm getting right now. I'm sorry y'all. I, I got the can't help it's bad. Yeah. I can't help but to get excited. Anybody that got the can't help it with you. You think about how good God is. You got the can't help it. You got to let somebody know. I wonder in this room, is that anybody besides me got the can't help it? Sometimes I raise my hand when it ain't on cue. I wish I had. Sometimes I just say, Lord, thank you with no music. I can sing without any music because when you know God. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole lot of people in church. Yeah. See, when you're curious, you come to look at things. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're interested, you invest in it. Yeah. Yeah. I just said something. I just, I just gave you nothing. Most good Pharisees call, notice what I'm saying, call Jesus a good man. Good man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you call it? The Muslim says he's good. He says he's good too. Jehovah's Witness says he's good. The Mormons say he's good. The same thing that defines us can also enslave us. Yeah, a whole lot of people think more highly of themselves than they ought to. Come in with our dressed up clothes. We don't want it. We don't want our hands to get out of place. That's the reason why some folk won't even raise their hand and worship because I didn't dress up to get smutty and dirty. But when you love the Lord, you don't even worry about your makeup because you know God can give you new makeup. He can give you new this and that. But when you think about how good God is, you got to worship Him in spite of you. You worship Him in spite of what you got home. Oh. What I got to say that somebody in this room got a story to tell. And you know that if it had not been for God on your side, you would 